What is good, everybody? How's everybody doing? All right, let's get this show started. Uh, bear with me two seconds. How's everybody doing? Happy Tuesday. All right, let's do this, move this over. Yeah, for anybody on the YouTube side that wants to jump on the Zoom link, you can. The the YouTube side, I'll tell you the 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 I think it's only going to be like in 420p. I don't know. I think you uh, for some reason YouTube throttles it. So if you want to jump on, there's room on the Zoom. If not, you know, you can watch it in 420p, I guess. And uh <laughs> we'll go from there. So how's everybody doing? Um quick disclaimer. So I feel like crap. Uh, my uh, my head is killing me. So hopefully we can get through tonight pretty quickly, but still get a lot of content out um, and uh, and go from there. All right. Yeah, yeah, man. I am just. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's like the the weather. I don't know what it is, but I've just the last couple of days I've just had a pounding headache. So yeah. Yeah, you got it. You got it. So let's dive into it. Let's start off. So uh, hopefully everybody, this is part of your standard weekly um, preparation is knowing what's coming up in the news, right? Knowing what pairs are going to be moving, knowing where the volatility is going to be. And that's ultimately what I'm looking for. So uh, is this the usual, wait, just recently joined the discord. Is this the usual weekly call? Um, this is the public call. Yeah, no, no. The, the training call we do on Thursdays. So yeah, yeah. The training call we do on where we kind of break down and do our back testing and stuff. So, but anyway, going into the news, right. Going into news. So you can see like, we've just got a tremendous amount of, well, I won't say it's important news. It's, it's, it's going to be a bunch, a bunch of just shenanigans in my opinion. Um, Everything that these Yahoo said right here was just a bunch of throw up coming out of their mouth that made absolutely no sense. I don't know if anybody actually paid attention to what it was saying, um, but yeah, it was just it, it, in a nutshell. If you, if especially this guy right here, what old freaking Jerome Powell was saying um, made absolutely no sense, and I, I, I was listening to most of it in the background. Um, it, it yeah that that's all i'm going to say and and if if you want to know exactly what the outcome of every one of these speakers what their what their thoughts were on the upcoming or going forward what their individual um analysis and predictions and how they're going to um, attempt to like for the U.S. bring down hyperinflation. How to bring strength back into dollar, all that stuff. If you want to know exactly how or what the outcome was, just look at the chart. And the charts are just sideways. There, they, the market has no idea which way these people are leaning. How they're gonna, you know, it has no confidence in what they're projecting because if you just look back, I mean, the last two weeks, most of these markets are just sideways. So. Yeah, it's it's a it's just shenanigans. Um, going into tomorrow, though, um, really the only thing I'm going to be paying attention to is Australian NFP. It's their jobs report. So I want to see, um, you know, kind of what that brings uh, because I'm I'm kind of torn apart between the Australian dollar. I'm looking for AUD USD for bullishness, but I'm looking for bearishness in Australian Canadian. So. You know, we'll we'll kind of see what this brings tomorrow. Um, it's going to be tomorrow during Sydney session and right before Asian opens up. So that's what I'm going to be waiting for. That's really the only thing tomorrow that I'm worried, you know, not worried about, but I'm I'm going to be concerned with. Um, crude oil inventories obviously is going to move the Canadian dollar and U.S. oil. And uh, I'll, I'll be honest, if you're if you're following what the U.S. policy is with oil, right? They're talking about closing a significant, actually probably the major pipeline in North America that funnels most of the fossil fuels into Canada. And if they do that, you can expect oil prices to skyrocket, meaning you can expect the Canadian dollar just to do that. 
Um, so I'm, I'm definitely kind of keeping track of what's going to be going on with the oil markets because it, it, I mean, I guess maybe it makes sense to me what they're trying to accomplish. And if they're trying to accomplish consumers paying more at the pump, they're, they're succeeding because it, it's happening. I mean, I know, especially you guys live on the West coast of the United States, you guys are well over $4 a gallon. We're creeping up mid $3 here. It's ridiculous. What resources do I use to keep up with the, with the, with oil? Just get on the business channels. I mean, what's happening on the floor, on the stock exchange floor is, is direct correlation of what's going on. So, but yeah, I mean, for me, it's, it's just following what's going on in the business channels. Um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure. Yeah, no, yeah, you guys are, oh, geez, you're almost at $5 a gallon there. Yeah, it's, it's going to be worse, man. It's going to be worse. Uh, do I use oil for heating? So I personally don't, but up north they do. So yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's going to get ridiculous. So, and the more, the more that they start siphoning off supply and demand increases, you're just going to see that to oil markets. And if that happens, you're going to see Canadian dollar extremely appreciate in value because of that. Because you know the the Canadian dollar is strictly tied to the oil markets. If you just look at how that correlates. Um, but going after that, I mean, Thursday is going to be a dead day, right? Uh, it is Veterans Day in the United States and in Canada. Um, so both markets are going to be closed. I would expect that probably during New York session, that volatility is going to be pretty, pretty hampered down. Um, you know, you've got the Swiss bank board member speaking, which I really doubt that's going to have any impact on the market. Um, and then going into Friday, now Friday, this is the one that I really want to pay attention to. If you guys have been following, the Treasury currency report has been postponed for the last like three weeks. And to me, that just tells me that there is such manipulation in what the US Treasury Department is putting into this report. It's almost like, you know, hurry up and release the report because you're getting to the point where I'm not going to believe a word it says anymore. Um, because if the delay, the de de delay, 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 delay just means that they keep trying to get approval to release it. And someone is like, no, change this or change this or change this. So I really don't even, I'm, I'm to the point now where I just want to see what crap they're going to put into there. And it, and if you, if you haven't looked at it, I mean, definitely, pop it open and you'll see what they're what they're really talking about is it, this right here um they're they're going to be looking at manipulators in the market right which which banks world banks are manipulating their currencies uh they're going to be talking about all kinds of actions all kinds of policies that are going to be uh potentially in place uh, to either bring stabilization to the markets or to bring volatility to the markets. Who knows like which side of the fence you want to be on. But the fact that this thing has been just getting postponed and postponed and postponed um, is, is telling me that it's just going to be a bunch of crap. So it is what it is. Um, let's see. So USD, USD CAD is bearish. Um, well, I mean, from a higher time frame perspective, potentially. But yeah, just, just keep in mind that USD CAD, depending on what the US dollar, well, we'll get into it. Let's get into it. Let's, let's dive in. So it's not as easy as saying, well, because the Canadian dollar is going to be strengthening that automatically USD CAD is going to be bearish, right? Because you have to see what the strength is in the U.S. dollar as opposed to the Canadian dollar. Um, when you know realistically, what's the chart showing us? So, the first thing we'll start with is this. Hold on, let me get over here and let's get so the DXY right. Like, what is the DXY doing currently? And for me, this is you know we've we've been talking about this for a very long time. Um, this right here is my line in the sand, right? I don't know why my markings. Okay, so this redistribution right here, I guess 
there we go. This redistribution right here, specifically this high, okay? This high is very important to me. Um, depending on what we do here, there's, there's gonna be two options, right? Option A is this turns into a reaccumulation. We violate this high taking out all of supply that was here. And if that's the case, then we're coming up into this area here, right? I mean, the first target's gonna be getting into this area, but this, this area really doesn't hold as much water as does this, right? So if that's the case, you're gonna see strength in the US dollar coming up into like the 99 to $100 range, okay? Um, the, the other option is that this distribution plays out, right? And we make a new low, right? We go ahead and break this low right here, and there's going to be a lot of speculation in U.S. dollar specifically weakening, right? Because we've come to the that last area of supply, right? That last point that supply is holding itself, and if we do see price ultimately start to distribute and then redistribute, then you're going to anticipate us making a new low out of here. Um, that's what I'm anticipating. That's what I'm waiting on, right? I've been I've been waiting on this. It seems like forever. Um, I mean, just look at it's it's pretty much the entire last month. We came into this area and we've been we've spent approximately 41 days. 41 days. We've just been sitting here waiting for the U.S. dollar to really tell us what's what's going on. That's for me personally. I haven't traded EU in that time because EU is is just it's it's a bunch of order flow mess. Um, So with that said, that's that's what I'm waiting on for the dollar. You know, we we need to see ultimately do we make do we make our our high and break above this or just price now make a new low and if we do that we've confirmed the distribution. Right? Essentially this is your range, this would have been the UTAD, you'd be looking for price to break that low, come back, mitigate and then start working its way down. All right. Um, that's ultimately what I'm waiting on, though. All right. Uh, I did. I don't know where my alert is. Maybe I had it in another chart, but I have an alert up here that says reaccumulation confirmed. And I have another one that says distribution confirmed. And it's just a waiting game to see what happens next. All right. Hold on. Bear with me. Let me turn my fan on. OK, there we go. All right. So with that in mind, right, let's go down and I'll kind of walk you through what I have. Uh, what I have open and what's going on. So AU, um, AU, pretty simple, right? AU for me, um, not only did we maintain our intraday structure out of this point here, right? Out of this leg. All right. Not only did we maintain this coming into 50% of this move here. Um, after that, we built strength, right? We've broken some lower time frame structure. Okay. We broke this invalidated this supply area on the intraday, which was also structure on the lower time frame. We come down and um, ultimately make a new high, right? So we've distributed out of this point. This is what's maintaining lower time frame for me. And ultimately we saw on NFP, right? During NFP, we saw a really, really clean accumulation. All right. Um, if you guys haven't seen it, I would definitely go back and mark it up, but Here's your accumulation in a point of demand, right? In a reaccumulation area that price uh, ultimately gave us a clean, clean, clean uh, accumulation. So I, I had a small risk out of the 80% of the two minute candle. Um, now I was perfectly happy doing it out of the two minute candle, but if I wanted to do it out of the entire move, that's where the 80% would have been. And the, the main reason why, why I wanted to do it out of there is because you've got major imbalance in the seconds time frame down in here. But fast forward to what today brought. And today you can see that price comes into that 80%. We build another schematic and now we're in the midst of a distribution, okay? So um, ultimately the price action that we saw, right? We saw this accumulation. We saw the attempted distribution, right? And price ended up distributing, failing to take this low, coming in to mitigate out of that. And now what I'm waiting for is I'm waiting for this now to manifest itself during London or New York. And 
kind of this is what I'm looking for, right? I want to see I want to see this continuation to go higher. We do have we do have a schematic, right? I think I I thought I marked it up. Hold on. Yeah, I guess maybe I didn't. Um, but we do have we do have a schematic here, right? You do have your one. Here's your change of character. You have a two drive, three drive, and your spring. Um, and then you have a micro in here, okay? Um, but ultimately, you've got a distribution that's going on above that. All right. So I'm waiting for that distribution now to ultimately. Here we go. What I'm waiting for this distribution is to walk itself down into mitigating this to then confirm a reaccumulation. Right. Um, market cycle, we've got our accumulation. I want to see now this area here give us that reaccumulation so that we can continue to take this higher. If this fails, right? If we trade below here, that's it. I'm I'm done looking for buys on AU until we get down into structure, uh, which would be way down in here, right? Which would be way down in here. I, I may take a look in here because this is the reaccumulation that invalidated supply. So I may take a look in here, um, but I, I'm not going to be looking for any buys until we get down into like this 72, 600 area. All right. Uh, so for the meantime, I mean, I'm at, uh, let me check. Hold on. I am at a reduced risk. Yeah. yeah. So my, my stop loss is at the bottom of this wick. So I'm on the hook for, what am I on the hook for? So my entry, my entry was 3.3 pips. And so I've, I've shaved off about a third of my risk. So um, I'm going to continue to just wait. Uh, I'm personally not going to get up for London. So I'll see it when I wake up prior to New York open to see what price action we're getting. And then I'm going to try and get into something to continue this going higher. Why not? Oh, wait, why not? Wouldn't you want to still look for entries until the POI is invalidated to the to then look lower? Which POI are you talking about? what we were currently playing out of what this right here this low the blue box the blue box you talking about in here uh, i mean you can i'm i'm personally not going to if if this accumulation fails which happened during a news event and we now trade lower. Now we have another redistribution here. It's going to have to be one heck of a of a schematic for me to want to take anything out of there. This this to me is the attempt. This is your attempt at mitigating out. And if they're unable to get anything out of there, then I'm just going to wait for it to become lower. Yeah. Yeah, that's 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 how I'm going to see it, because then you're you're going to have when you ask yourself. So let's just say hypothetically. Well, hold on. Hypothetically, we get this. Right. So here's supply. So even if we got something in here, I would I would probably be waiting for us to invalidate supply. So we'd have to trade above this madness in here. Just just so that I feel comfortable in knowing that we're going to go higher. Yeah. Uh, it reminds me of what Chef JPY did to me. What did Chef JPY did to you? Oh, where you didn't take the limit off. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that's that's exactly the the case. You know, yeah, yeah. It's it's it, you've got to look at it like that. You know, Chef JPY. So I was looking for that buy out of here, right? This is this is what was maintaining the order flow, right? This is your order flow leg. Boom, that right there. And because we're bullish on every time frame, right? I'm, I'm going to play order flow. I don't mind playing order flow out of this. Um, and you can see like we, we had a couple of areas. We had the 219 and the 73 minute that we were looking at. Price, unfortunately, yesterday, price, unfortunately, came within, what was it, one pip? What was this thing? Hold on. Price came within one pip of our entry. And then from there, it moved 43 pips, okay? So after, after you see a reaction like that, I mean, if you still have an order limit here, I mean, I personally delete the order limit, 
there's nothing I want to play out of it. Um, and then coming into um, Frankfurt session gave just a, a super clean schematic, just no confirmation, right? Uh, I know, listen, everybody has their own different way of trading. Uh, me personally, no break of structure, no trade. And for me, a break of structure is a break of structure, not like an internal break of structure, not like a order flow break of structure. It's, you know, here's, here's my schematic, right? Here's my climax to my AR. Here's my test. Here's my test. Here's my test in B. Here's my UA, right? So I know I'm sure a bunch of people probably saw that and said, okay, I'm going to buy out of something here. But this to me is not a spring right? That's not a spring. It's not a type one. Type ones and type twos or type ones and others uh, types of schematics require different confirmations for entry for me. So, you know, most of you guys know that on a type one, I only need the BOS. So this is not a sign of strength for me. That's not a sign of strength. So I wouldn't have even contemplated looking for an entry yet, but then we get our spring. So if we get our spring, now this is what needs to break. And you could see that never happens. So the schematic kept, I know a lot of you guys this morning told me that um, the schematic kept you out of the trade, which was great because what ended up happening, this thing just ended up coming lower. So it kept you from a needless stop loss, uh, which was a shame because I really, really, I mean, I got up and I saw this and I really wanted this thing to just take off from here, especially hitting right where my point of interest was, the, the, the spring coming smack dab right into it. So... Um, would you look for cells in its current area? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm going to look for a hedge just because I'm still holding buys from those two areas down here. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to look, I'm going to look for the hedge, but I'm, I'm not looking for a hedge from the current location. No, no, no. I'm, I want to see it come on higher. So yeah, I'm not looking for anything out of here to me. I, I want this now that we've broken. Um, I want to look for, I want to look for potential entries out of the actual distribution. So, you know, and if it gives it to me, great. If it doesn't, I'm not going to really concern myself. Um, I'll just wait for price to come lower so we can buy it out of that lower area. All right. Um, Asian session two. What's Asian session? The, oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so You've got Frankfurt open though. That's that was the key right here was the Frankfurt open candle. So Frankfurt was the spring, which this would have been a perfect scenario. Frankfurt springs it, break of break of structure. London comes back to mitigate, and we just take off. So yeah, uh, why not? Isn't price technically in the SC? Mm, I mean, the SC of what of order flow? Sure. Yeah. Yep. But remember structure. Higher time frame, intraday, lower time frame, bullish. What is maintaining the order flow leg? Is it this or is it that? That is your order flow, right? Up here. So order flow is bearish from here. So yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm personally not playing out of that. I'm not going to do anything out of here. I mean, maybe if New York session, I wake up and we've, we've created a perfect type one schematic, you know, and we get that break. All right. Maybe I'll throw a little money at it, but I'm not interested in trying to play with that. Not with Asian highs, Asian highs, Asian highs intact. So yeah, I'm, to me, this is, yeah, to me, this, this would be this entry right here out of that would be maybe on all of my priority lists. If I have like a one to 20 priority list, like say I have 20 things I'm looking at, that would be number 21. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, yeah. If, uh, let's see, what are those highlighted yellow areas? Asian session price action. If price broke the high, could you play an accumulation? If price breaks this high, sure because then we're back in order flow, right? If price does that, then this would be relative, irrelevant, right? Because this would be my shakeout. But in order for me to take a buy now out of anything up here, I need order flow to go back bullish. What makes order flow go back bullish? This break right here. Yeah.
can you mark the higher time frame intraday and lower time frame? Um, I mean, your higher time frame. So, well, easy. The easy one is lower time frame and intraday are currently this right here. That low is lower time frame and your intraday at the same point currently. Um, and then higher time frame. Higher time frame is this low right here. So you've got this entire run and technically this area right here is my higher time frame SC. All right. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, the key is so just the key from intraday perspective, right? So, like, this is your intraday leg, right? Look, so this was your intraday leg. Okay. Um, hold on. Yeah, yeah, it's been, it's been lagging. Yeah. Yeah, it was lagging. Well, it was worse on Safari. I'm, I'm on Chrome now with it, but lately it's been deleting my, my markings. So I don't know what the heck they're doing, man. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if they're I, I, secretly, I think they're secretly targeting me, bro. Cause I, I sent them so many nasty emails about fixing crap, but whatever it is, what it is. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So this was, this was the leg, right? This was our leg and this is the slingshot, right? So when price comes back into our slingshot, and then makes a new high out of the distribution, right? Follow the market cycle. This now became intraday. And because when you look at lower time frame structure, right? So we broke lower time frame structure, then we made a new low, meaning this was lower time frame structure, and then we broke lower time frame structure only to break it again, right? So at this point, this was maintaining lower time frame. And then you could see we just broke it. So this is why this is also maintaining lower time frame because this is a reaccumulation. It cannot hold structure, right? And then we just haven't had a distribution until now we're seeing this madness, right? So if we pull back into here, right? And then do that, this now will maintain my lower time frame structure, if that makes sense. All right, cool. Um, run brave browser yeah i mean maybe dude i just you know when you have 500 bookmarks on chrome and you're so used to using chrome on all your other devices it's 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 always hard to change man so i like i like i like chrome it took me a while to get used to chrome and we'll see um let's see what about to say if that reaccumulation made a new high then it would be no this wouldn't be no because let me ask you, if this makes a new high, oh, hold on. If this makes a new high, right? What, what part of that was a complete market cycle? Nothing, this is just, that would just be a, a, a reaccumulation, right? It's a continuation play. So continuation plays cannot hold structure. They're just continuation plays, all right? So anyway, that's what I got on Chef JPY. Uh, how important are fundamentals? Like, do I care what the interest rate drops to? No, I don't. You know, do I care of the timing of when those releases are coming out? Yes, because that's that's where we're gonna have volatility, right? Last week, um, you know, last week that US 30 buy was on, on FOMC was talk about precision, talk about stupid, ridiculous um, manipulation. You know, same thing with SPX last week. Um, you know, when you get when you get these, you know, releases, when you get these the the data coming out, the the data. If you don't think that institutions have that data ahead of time, uh, just look at a chart. You know, and actually, when I, I you know if I get time and I'll look at US thirty, I'll, I'll show you. You know, you, you can see going into a news release exactly what institutions are doing and why would they be filling buy orders if they didn't anticipate positive news coming out of that that report so yeah
Uh, so you're saying you keep a higher time frame in mind, intraday structure only in the daily? Wait, so wait a minute. So uh, you're saying you keep higher time frame in mind, intraday structure only in the daily, higher high and higher lows? Um, all right, I don't know what that question means, bro. It's probably not you, it's probably me because of my headache, but I just can't understand it. Um, if, if you're asking like, how, how do I understand the analysis? Yeah, I mean, everything's from a higher time frame point of view. So could you actually quickly show us now? Yeah, no. I mean, when I get to US 30, I'll get to it. Would you love to, wait, would love to see an intermediate advanced video on schematics from you? Yeah. <laughs> Oh man, I'd, I'd love, listen, I'll tell you this, man. I, I would love to just do videos, man, but I, I just don't have time for them, man. I'll be honest. You know, it's, if, if you, if you really, if you saw my schedule and how much I'm running around with all, everything else that I'm doing, dude, it's, it's, I just don't have the time for it, bro. So, all right. Um, yeah. So this is chef JPY. Like right now it's, everything's in limbo um, uh, for the, for the short term. I'm, I'm still holding the buys. I've taken the partials, the three partials I'm taking. Um, at this point now, I'm expecting this to just come down and I'm going to be waiting for it here. You can see I've got my alert just sitting here waiting. Um, however long this takes, it takes. If you guys remember this, this entry here, I waited 150 days for that sucker, you know, but I will gladly wait 150 days for this thing to come back down if it means that I don't even know, what was it? A one to 550, I think is the lowest entry that I caught on here. Uh, what was it? Yeah, one to 568. One to 568 was the was that entry. So, you know, Chef JPY right now, I'm just waiting for it. Let, let the sucker come down. So uh, does Euro odd and USD CAD correlate? Um, not for me. Why? Why would... So, well, if you look at it, so let's look at it like this, right? So I guess to some extent there would be correlation because so your US dollar and your Euro are inverse correlated, right? They're inverse correlated. The Canadian dollar and the Australian dollar and the NZD, the Kiwi, these are all anti per diems, right? So think of an anti per diem as a soft currency. It's the opposite of a safe haven, right? A hard currency would be your safe havens, your chef, your Swiss franc, your JPY, uh, your US dollar, and then gold, right? So when you lump them together, so to some extent, you could say that, let me see here. No, there would be no correlation because this would be inversely. So yeah, never mind. Never mind. Anti per diems. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could just Google it. Google anti per diem currency, Google soft and hard currency. It'll it'll kind of give you a, a synopsis of what all that is. So it's it's the top of the correlation of FX book. Yes, probably so, man. Yeah. That's that's hold on. <laughs> I'm glad you bring it up. What did we look up the other day? It, it said to like to buy, oh, that's what it says. Like everybody's buying EN, right? Yeah, I don't, I don't look at any of that correlation. That, that to me is, is, uh, is shenanigans. Um, I will, I do get a kick out of this, right? So let's see, hold on. What was it? EN, right? EN the other day. Yeah, so EN, EN right here, EN. So, oh, it's actually not doing, it's, it's doing better than it did the other day. Cause the other day, wasn't it like 80 something percent people were buying EN. Um, so it's telling you that, you know, you should be long on EN. And when we looked at EN, remember what I, remember what I posted last week, where is it at? Remember what I posted last week, right here. I said, from here, we're going lower and you can see what's happened. You know, another, another buyer's trap, you know? So I'm, I'm not interested in trying to buy any of this crap. You know, to me, this is all just shenanigans. Um, do you use any fundamentals when trading, like looking at CPI, interest rates, et cetera? I, I don't care about the actual data. I just care about when they're being released. So yeah, to, to me, it, it, 
it doesn't matter, right? It, it doesn't. Why is that a buyer's trap? So this accumulation, how many people were trying to buy out of that? I guarantee you a lot because they saw an accumulation and they got stop loss hit. And then the same thing out of this accumulation, stop loss hit. And then out of this accumulation, stop loss hit. You know, they haven't gotten hit yet. I'm sure there's people waiting to buy out of that, but I guarantee you because that high right there, people were trying to buy out of this and stop loss hit. So for me, all of these were designed for buyer's traps because they're all just support levels. You know, I, I guess I'll go back to this. What part of this makes you want to buy EN? Just look at a chart. Hold on. Let me, let me get the full chart in here. What part of this is telling you, uh, let, me, let me hide some of my drawings. That way it's a little easier. What part of EN says, let me put some money on buys? Because for me, I'm just waiting for sells. Anytime price comes into my sell area, I'll sell it. You know, um, wait. So would you choose to, lo to look at EA to GA? No, no, no. Uh, if, if you want to find EA, right? EA and EN correlate. GA and GN correlate. I don't correlate the euro and the pound. I don't. Um, can you explain my look on fundamentals, please? Um, what do you mean, like my look on it? I just, whenever the data is coming out, you know that there's going to be a manipulation of the market. So if I know that something is coming out at 8.30 in the morning, I'm going to look to see around 8 o'clock in the morning what is in my point of interest and then trade it accordingly. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, okay, so we talked about uh, Chef J. Let's talk about EJ, right? So EJ is gonna be presenting a very unique opportunity, I think. Um, so we've got a couple of, and when I get to, I'll, I'll show you like US 30, how, how we traded US 30 and SPX. US 30 specifically, I'm a little bitter about US 30 because my broker did not fill me um, but the rest of the guys were able to get filled and I'm happy that they did, but all right. So, you know, let's, let's look at EG, right? EG has been for the last four years in a distribution, right? We're, we're in this massive distribution, but we are in our higher time frame structure point, right? This is the 50% of our weekly candle that created this high. So what I'm personally looking at is this, right? We'll just fast forward to like some of the lower time frame stuff. So we do have we do have an accumulation, right? Now the buy on this accumulation is done. There's no longer a buy out of this accumulation. So right now, what I want to see is I want to see either price come down so I can buy it out of the pound news manipulation. And the idea is I want to kind of buy it on a hedge because we're all holding cells from up here, right? I want to buy it on a hedge to either take it up into this area here or take it up into the area that holds lower time frame structure because this is what's maintaining lower time frame structure. All right. That's kind of what I that's in a perfect world that's what I want to play out. Now, if it doesn't come down first, instead we come up higher, right? Well then I'm only going to be looking for those cells. All right. Uh, what's the sell area on EN? The redistribution. It's like, I don't know, 400 pips up. It's, it, that's why it's on my secondary list. What higher time frame do you gain your market direction from? And what time frame do you take trades from? I, what do you mean? Like the actual number? This, like this number right here, 15? Uh, I, I don't, I don't take an entry out of a time frame. I take an, I, I take a time, I take an entry out of a point of interest. And I mean, that point of interest could be a 15 second or it could be a 15 minutes. It's going to be the same point of interest. The, the, the number is irrelevant. It's the, it's the structure POI and it's the market cycle that we're in. Uh, can you take a look at AN? Um, I mean, I can take a look at AN, but I can tell you that AN is probably doing the same thing that it's been doing for the last three years, sideways. Um, so what motivates me to hedge? What do you mean, what, mo what motivates me to hedge? So I don't have to, if, if I'm in a bullish market and I'm in buys, 
the the sell is my opportunity to take partials so that I don't have to take profits out of my buys. So I'm protected because if the sell gets clapped, I've made up for it in the buy. So that's what that would, you know, it's a, it's a win-win. I, I can't lose. Right. That that's what, that's what, um, yeah, for me, that's that the hedge is so important because, you know, here, I'll give you an example, right? Like, at this point here, I would probably be looking to close out a Chef JPY. But what if I can get a what if I can get a sell here to now sell this down to this area? I don't need to take any more partials out of this, right? Because now I'll look for the buy and take this higher. Once I get this protected, once I'm in a buy here and I get this protected, I close out of the entire sell, and then I just redo this. So that's that's what the hedge is for. It's to protect yourself. Yeah. How meticulous is it? Uh, I mean, it's very scenario based. So, yeah, I mean, there's, I don't know, there's, it's just not, I'll tell you this, it's not black and white, like it's, it's all scenario based. So depending on what kind of structure, what kind of schematic, where supply and demand is, you know, the cause and effect that's been associated with all of that, like all of that goes into determining one, what my risk assessment is on the, on the trade Two, what my risk uh, value is that I'm going to put on the trade where I'm going to partial out and then my plan of attack to where either work in hedges or to, you know, have my overall targets. So that's, yeah. Um, okay, cool, cool, cool. All right. So EG, like I said, I ideally wouldn't mind playing out of this buy, but if we come back, I mean, I'm sure everyone has this marked up, you know, you can just see coming into the news, right. Coming into pound news. That's what you got. I mean, you've got a super, super clean accumulation schematic, right? Beautiful type one, you know, three drives and you got your spring. So, you know, and this was the news release right here at eight o'clock in the morning, you know? So if you don't think that this, and, and this is a one minute chart, right? How long do you think this took, right? How long? Just look at it from start to finish, right? This was four hours, four hours on a one minute chart to build this schematic, okay? Um, so this is the area that I would be looking for a potential buy on EG, but only as a hedge, right? What I'm really interested in doing is playing out of, so we have a, we had a, a micro distribution up here, right? You could kind of see one, two, three drives, your UTAD, and then what does price do? Price comes in and mitigates 50% of the UTAD, right? So it does that, it does that after giving us that boof, right? Gave us that boof, comes back and mitigates. And then what do we get? We get another distribution, right? You've got, you know, you've got one, two, three drives. That's your, you know, your up thrust. And then you get your UTAD. So out of that UTAD, what I want to do is now I want to play, I want to get a distribution out of ideally from here to here in that area. That's what I'm waiting for. It's like a 15 pip range. I want to see a clean distribution out of there. If I don't get a distribution, I'm not taking the trade. All right. I'm not setting a limit on it. Um, you know, for me, I, I can see price coming up higher because I have higher targets that I want to sell from. So I'm going to be pretty, pretty convinced that if we do distribute out of here, then we're going to go lower. But I mean, I would definitely have this marked out. You know, you can see and you can see the manipulation. You know, here's your here's your trading range. Um, price ends up sweeping Asian lows for all you guys that like to trade Asia, you know, sweeps Asian lows, then sweeps the highs. So, and then we have a micro in here. All right. The one reason that I've got this marked out is, and you can kind of see it. So price right here trades below this point. And when it does that, if you mark out and you can see, I've marked it out. Um, when you mark out the UTAD. You can see that after breaking that low, we trade back up into 50% of our UTAD. So this to me was the test potentially. So we could just come into this area here and distribute. So for me, I'm gonna wait for the distribution. There's not gonna be a limit order that I'm gonna play on it. All right. Um, what's my bias on UC? Uh, my bias is it's on my secondary list. So I'm not, I'm not caring too much about it this week. Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, does the time frame of the schematic matter to you at all? What do you mean by the time frame? Like the number? Like like does like this right here, the five? No, it doesn't matter. No. Because what if I go up to a 15 minute? Is it still the same schematic? It is the same, same schematic, right? What if I go up to a one hour? Is it the same schematic? Yes, it's the same schematic, right? So the, the number doesn't matter. It's, it's what it's done and where it's at. And for me, the key is that we have created our booth out of this distribution, right? This is your terminal shakeout, your terminal UTAD. You've got the booth. You came back and you distributed out of this right here and created a new low. So, yeah. Yep. All right. So that's that's kind of what I'm waiting on. EG is something that I foresee me getting into either a buy or a sell, depending on which, relatively sooner than later. All right. Um, so the pair that is technically the top correlator may not be the best for finding the leader and the laggard. Wait a minute. So the pair that is technically the top correlator, what do you mean by top correlator? Top percentage, but what do you mean by top percentage? Yeah, what are you talking about top percentage? So here's my suggestion. If you've bookmarked my FX book for correlating pairs, just go ahead and delete that bookmark because it, it is absolutely useless to me. I mean, you can trade it. I, I don't, because that, that number changes, right? Um, I'll tell you who uses, who uses that stuff all the time is like those high frequency traders, the guys doing HFX stuff. To me, it makes no sense. Yeah, to me, it makes no sense. Yeah, I would, uh, yeah, I wouldn't, nope. This, this to me, just, I, I can't even tell you how the algorithm comes up with these numbers. So I don't use them at all, at all. Yeah. Um, did you add to your one list throughout the week or only at the beginning of the week? Uh, you mean my primary list? Uh, so yeah, like the, the, what I'll do is like, it used to be Sundays, but now I do it Monday mornings, Mondays, I'll finalize my primary list. And, you know, unless during the week, unless price and alert has gone off, that gets it promoted up to primary list. It's just going to stay on the secondary list. Yeah. Like it, it's got to come for me. My primary list means that I'll be in a position to take a trade on it, uh, during that week. And if I've got to wait, like in the case of like EN, where I have to wait 400 pips, yeah, there's no point in me looking at EN until we come into the point of interest that I want to sell from. All right. Um, so how did you figure which pairs correlate the best? I just got to, you got to, you got to research, I guess, the, what pairs, the, here, I'll give you like a quick, like rundown. Right. So we all know, everyone should know that DXY inversely correlates with Euro USD, right? You should also know that the EXY or the Euro futures is the same as Euro USD, which means that it inversely correlates with the DXY. Meaning that for the most part, anything like USD uh, chef, right? and euro chef would be inversely correlated right uh, we can also you can also look at uh, things like usd canadian oh, hold on my bad usd canadian right would be inversely correlated with canadian japanese yen why because you've got the two safe havens in US dollar and Japanese yen, okay? So you're gonna inverse correlate those. Uh, same thing, like if you are looking, um, you know, gold USD or gold Australian or gold, whatever country versus silver are the benchmarks, right? But you can also, as another correlating asset, what would be another correlating that you can do with XAU? USD, 
well, you could take another safe haven. So you can inverse correlate USD, Japanese yen, right, with gold. All right, if that makes sense. So like, it's just, it's learning, you know, I mean, how, how did I, how did I learn them? Um, I'll be honest, like it was a lot of, uh, some of the stuff was in like books I read. Some of it was uh, actually looking at the charts and, and comparing them. Um, you know, for me, you know, like US, US 30, US 30 and SPX 500 are benchmarks against each other, right? Um, what's another one? You know, anything New Zealand and Australian are correlating assets. So EA to EN, right? And you to, uh, to AU, right? Those are all correlating assets against each other. They're benchmarks against each other. So um, that's, I mean, that's just how I've done it, you know? Um, are your Thursday trip? No, they're not open to the public, man. Otherwise, th that it would be like 12 hours long. So, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, wait, wait, let's see. Why would you get into a cell on EG? Why wouldn't I get into a cell on EG? Are we not bearish? Looks like we're bearish. Pretty confident we're bearish. I mean, we're bearish from a lower time frame and an intraday. So this is, this is our leg right here. So why wouldn't I get into cells? Um, let's see. Say it distributes there, would, would you still be looking for buys? So if we get into a distribution here, yeah, no, I'm not gonna look for the buys. I want, I want us to come lower first. If we can come lower first, I'll look for the buys. Um, remember the buy is just the hedge, right? If, if, we, if, we, if we do this, right? So if we come, let me get down to like, hold on. So if we come up here and we distribute, right? And make a new low. So now we have a distribution, a distribution, a distribution. I'd be looking for price to distribute again. I'm not looking for a buy out of here. What I'm looking for is to send this down. All right, yeah. Uh, can I see, can I see your settings for the session indicator? Um, goodness. Okay. Uh, sessions on chart. Let's see. There it is. I think these are right. Hold on. Uh, uh well, all right. Yeah. There, there's my, I, I, I personally, I created my own range. I created my own thing, but trading view won't let me make it public. So, but yeah, this is, here's this, the, the key I get, everyone always asks, like, how do you keep the lines? It's activate high and low, activate high and low, open and close of the candles. And that's all you need. Right. So that's, that's my, and then you could change whatever colors you want. You know, I don't care about Sydney session. So you could change your, your colors and the opacity of it. Okay. Um, what pairs could you correlate with EG? So the easiest one, right? Like, so you have EG, right? So if you correlate Euro, the EXY or Euro futures and the uh, pound futures, right? Which is the BXY, you'll, you'll have a bias, right? You'll have your bias on strength, whether, you know, if, if realistically EXY is bullish and the pound futures are bearish, then you know you're probably going to want to be buying EG, okay? The other thing that you can correlate on EG is having those two in mind. You can also go and take a look at the, um, the, hold on, wait a minute. I just had, a, I'm trying to think here. So on EG, right, on EG, if you invert, the pound futures or GU, right? If you invert them, that's going to give you the correlation. Does that make sense? Let me know if it makes sense. Because remember, the euro is diametrically opposed. It's the complete opposite of what the dollar is doing. So if you invert GU, you technically are playing you know, UG, which would be US dollar pound in the opposite. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense. And if you, if you want to look at here, hold on. So like, I'll, I'll give you a glimpse of it. So let's just say we go to like the four hour chart on EG. 
right? We go to the four hour chart on EG. And then we go and we'll throw up GU. Actually, we'll just throw up on, uh, cause I got the pound, throw up pound features on GU, but you got to invert correlate it, right? So you got to invert it. Now, hold on for a sec. Where are we? We are, let me make it bigger, hold on. No, I had it right, invert it. There you go. Okay. So here's your here's your correlation, right? You could see how pound futures is making higher highs. So you've got divergence between pound futures on the inverted side and with euro, because this is making lower lows. So looking what I would do, and, and I don't do it very often, I just trade EG. Like I don't go into too much detail with it, but looking at like this, I would then take it take a look at what euro futures are doing compared to pound futures to get the strength and determine what I want to do with EG. All right. But for me, I'll tell you right now, divergence is just a, another checkbox. Like I'm not a huge, I don't put a lot of faith into divergence. I just, it's another checkbox on my confirmation checklist. What I look for is what's the chart telling me? The chart telling me is we're, we're bearish, you know, now are we in a higher time frame accumulation? Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. You can see the one drive, the two drive, the three drive. Right. Here's your trading range. You know, you have your SC, your ST, your STB potentially if we get a spring, you know, and then we make an STB. All right. Um, uh, let's see. Have you ever used symbol properties and swap to determine directional bias? Uh, no, I have no idea what symbol properties and swap are. So no, I've been told that positive swap or least negative is the direction most institution order flow is in. Um, not necessarily because um, the EU swap hasn't changed in four years that I've been trading. So yeah, I don't, I don't now. Yeah. Um, but I mean, I don't know. I mean, if, if you've back tested it and it's pretty damn accurate, then I'd say go with it. So, but anyway, so that's, that's EG. That's what, that's kind of what I'm waiting for on EG. Um, on, on EU, I mean, this is going to be a very quick talk. So I'm still holding cells from up here and from this area right over here. Yeah, I'm still holding this cell and the cell from up top. And you can just see like this madness, right? This thing has been, what are we, 40 something days? Yeah, 40 something days. So now when we look at, when we look at what's happened um, between EU and DXY, you'll see the divergence, right? Like if we come over here and let's just go to the four hour. Okay, so we'll throw this up and then we throw DXY up, right? And you can see, all right, so you could see that we have on EU, right? We've traded, but well, nah, I didn't want to do that, but you could see we've traded below this reaccumulation where we are still waiting to trade below this low on DXY. So EU is already showing us that it's coming lower. Um, so that's why I'm kind of anticipating this to be on the, cause it's inverted. I'm expecting this to be a reaccumulation. All right. So with that in mind, like I'm, I'm not interested in trying to sell, uh, EU from its current spot, but order flow, right. If we do come up into this area up here, that's why I've got my alert. I mean, I'll look for a sell out of it to keep sending this lower. Um, you know, cause I'm at this point. I am bearish on it and I'm going to continue to be bearish on it until we get into the point of interest I want to buy out of. 
And that's not going to be until we get here or here. These are my two areas that I want to buy out of. Okay. Do you trade gold? I do trade gold. I don't trade gold as much as a lot of people though, because gold is a mess, but um, yeah, I do trade gold. So that, that's kind of what I'm waiting on. And you can kind of see just, we had a massive redistribution and now it's starting to look like an accumulation again. Um, but we've been, at, we've been at that for 40 days. So I don't want to be locked up with margin for 40 days in a, in a pair that is doing absolutely nothing. You know, um, we caught a really nice hedge buy out of here uh, during some news event that gave us like a, a really, really clean one to 100 took our partials when we cleared that. But after that, that was it. This thing hasn't given much of anything. So, um, yep, absolutely. That's, that's, and I'll tell you, like when people ask me, um, you know, is it like, is it better to only trade three or four pairs and really learn them? I mean, you can, but you just got to be prepared to not take a trade for a very long time. You know, um, for me, if I'm waiting on EU to do something, I could trade, you know, Australian Canadian because it's going to be my point of interest, you know, but yeah, I, I, I'll tell you like for, for my, for my big trades, like the biggest trades I've ever had over the course of my trading career have all been out of intraday and higher time frame structure points. And, you know, I've waited months for them to come into those points of interest. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Yep. Exactly. Why do you take that EU buy? Why? So, um, and you could just see the market cycle, right? Follow the market cycle. So price accumulated, it reaccumulated, and then we came into a distribution. So this is the order flow, right? That was maintaining order flow. So when price created the distribution and then started accumulating in our point of interest, I took the buy out of here. Uh, on a lower time frame, it was, I don't remember, what was it like a 15 second accumulation we took. And all we were trying to do was get it up to our sell area. You know, we wanted to get up in here and instead it came into that right there and mitigated out of the FOMC candle, which that's what that distribution was. So the reason we took it, well, cause we were holding cells from up here and up here, it was the hedge, you know, like I haven't, I haven't taken, I haven't taken a partial out of this cell since we broke this low right here. Since this happened, that was my last partial I took. I'm just holding on to what I have until we get down into that area that I want to buy from. Okay. Um, am I still bullish on US dollars? Yeah, I am. Yep. Yeah, I'm just waiting for it to come into the intraday. So, um, okay. So that's what I got on that. Uh, SPX, we'll talk about SPX in a, once we get to indices. Um, pending orders. So I took a loss this morning. Now, NASDAQ, I, I, I was looking at NASDAQ this morning. Um, man, it was a pain, dude. It was a little bastard. So anyway, out of this reaccumulation right here, I don't know why this isn't marked, but I marked it out this morning. So this is a reaccumulation. So this is just what's maintaining our order flow, right? When price came into that area, gave us a super, super clean accumulation, right? Um, so this was the area that I was looking at right here. Yeah, this was the area that I was looking at. I was looking at it out of a play out of this. And as soon as we, as soon as we, ah, hold on. As soon as we did this, come on, there we go, annotate. As soon as we did this, caused a distribution, which then gave us that low. This came within, I think, two points of my 50% entry. And then reaccumulated. So as soon as that happened, I deleted this stupid order. I was pissed. Um, but it ended up just coming back and collapsing. So, you know, it is what it is for me. There was no play after that. Um, and you can, can, can I just see how this is just throwing up in, in order flow. Um, so, but I did take a loss on US 30. I had a US 30 uh, buy that I had set up and you could see same thing, right? Like we had, we made the high right up here. And this was what was maintaining order flow. And we identified a really clean area in there, an accumulation that we wanted to play out of. Price came just higher. Uh, what was it, one minute maybe? Yeah, here you go. So price came 
Oh, you know what? I marked it up on the other one. That's why. Hold on. I think it was Awanda. Yeah, it was on Awanda. So, yeah, I had this marked up. So we had a really nice spring, really, really clean. Um, I had the entry. We broke the high, and it just hit stop loss. So I took the loss on it no big deal. It is what it is. You know, that's why I only risk so little, but after that, I was kind of done with indices because we broke structure and I'm waiting for it to come lower now. So, and then I'll look for the buys. Um, all right, let's see. Can I go through GU? Yeah. Well, well I don't know. Do I have GU on primary or secondary? Uh, yeah, it's on there. We'll go through it. Yeah. How long have I been actively, actively trading? Uh, just about four years. Yeah. All right. So going down the list of what I'm actively watching, right? So we have G, uh, we have OddCAD, right? And again, for me, we've redistributed, right? We've we've had one, two, three, four drives, had our had our creek, we distributed and broke this low. So for me, I'm I'm looking for that continuation lower. Um, I've been bearish on this thing for a while. Um, I am still, I am still holding cells from up here. Um, ever since that we came into that news event up here, right? So I'm still holding the cells. Um, and you can see like my target, what do, what do I want to get into? You know, we, we broke the low, right? After a complete market cycle, this is, you know, this is on a higher time frame and accumulation. We reaccumulated and then we distributed, right? So now I'm just playing order flow because for me, structure is all bearish. So I'm going to continue to play order flow um, until we make a new low and then reset itself. You know, when we make this low down here, then I'll wait for price to come back up into a, an area of structure. Um, but when we look at what happened out of this area here, right? Um, and this is what I wanted to see today. You know, I wanted to see us rack out through Asian lows, which I figured was going to happen. And I want to now come back into this price action, right? We had a distribution up here, right? We had a, a micro and then a micro. And then this was the mitigation of that. Not only that, but that was the Frankfurt open that swept all the Asian highs and then gave us that low. So inside of here is a really clean fractal, right? Um, will I go through NU? Um, yeah, it's on the list. Yeah. Um, when you switch from break and retest to Wyckoff, did you have, did you see the win loss ratio go up or down? Uh, no, it went down. No, it went down. Yeah. I actually won more trades. Um, I, I won more trades doing break and retest. Like I was probably, I don't know, like 80, 85%. Um, yeah, I was probably like 80, 85%, but my average risk to reward was like one to three. So I think when I... So Friday, when I did my journal, my average risk to reward win loss or break even is like a one to 22 or a one to 21, something like that. So I take less trades, but make more money. So, yeah, but I, I lose more trades. Yeah. Um, let's see. Yep. Yeah. 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 I made it on, I made it on break and retest. So yeah. Fractal. Yeah. yeah. There's a fractal in there. So yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll dive into it. So just looking at this price action in here, like you come down, if, if you, so right in here, right, this was, this was the key for me. So this is that manipulation during Frankfurt that ultimately just collapses. And when you get down into it, oh, son of a gun, hold on. It won't let me go that low anymore. Give me a second. All right, so we'll just do this. All right, we'll come here. Okay, so this is that mitigation right here, right? This is the manipulation that sweeps out all, all of that. And you could see when we come and just that move, we come into 50%, right? We come into 50%. So now what I'm looking at is coming in and trading so you can see your distribution, right? What I'm looking at is this move right here. This, uh, this is what I want to see mitigate that move right here. 
So we come into this box and that's ultimately what I want to trade out of. So I'm going to be, again, this is order flow for me. So there's no, you know, there's no limit order I'm going to set. Um, but out of that price action, that's what I want to play. I want price to now come back into this area right here. And I want to look for a distribution. So I will take a distribution if we come back into this LPSY right here as well. So anywhere in this area is where I want to see price give me that distribution to send this sucker down. All right. Um, and it's going to be, again, why? Because this, hold on. So because this is now the last point of supply, this was the mitigation of that distribution up here. Um, and we've distributed it out of that manipulation. So now what I want to do is play out of something in here. Okay. Um, would love to hear you explain fractal. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not talking about like market fractals because I don't trade those kind of indicators. A, a fractal market is what's happening on the 15 second is also happening on the one hour, right? It's just, yeah. Why did you choose that high versus the newest lower high that was formed? This one here? Is that one, is that one you're talking about? Yeah, because so what, what did this do? Right. I'm playing order flow, right? So from a risk assessment, where's the most logical area for me to, at, at what point do I draw the line in the sand and say, okay, order flow is broken. We're going to go, bull, you know, we're going to go into structure up here. For me, it's this, you know, this to me is nothing. This to me is, a, is, is, you're right. It's the slingshot of lower time frame order flow. So keep in mind that all of this is order flow, right? All of this is order flow. So because structure is, structure is up here, right? So from a risk assessment, sure. I mean, you could play out of that, but I'm, I'm personally not. This, this, is too, this, this is too much of a risk for me to put equity on, right? I would rather play out of this price action up here. So, and that's what I'm gonna wait for. You know, we get up into this area here. That's where I'll wait for the distribution. If if price accumulates here and then I start to see something here, this could just potentially be another reaccumulation to get into this area. So, but this this to me is, you know, when I when I do a risk assessment, that that's just way too risky to play. Um, where I could play something else that is is has less risk involved. Yeah. Um, so that's that's what I'm waiting on AudCAD though. Um, I do, I do like the area. I do like the cells. Um, do I ever have, yep. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. They don't always come into my points of interest. Yeah. If they don't come into my points, of if they don't come into the points of interest that I want, then I just wait for them to make new structure and then I, I reset it. So, yeah. Where can you hear, hear about a slingshot? I don't know, man. I, I created it on my own. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I just, it's, it's, it's the term I use for the cause of the new higher than new low. So, all right. So that's odd CAD uh, on CAD chef now, right? CAD chef. I'm going to be looking. Um, I actually, I'm going to be looking for this. So CAD chef. You know, same kind of concept, right? Where we are just taking this sucker down. Um, you know, I'm 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 very interested in just continuing this play. Um, order flow hasn't broken on CAD Chef in a very very long time, so until order flow breaks, I'm just going to continue to keep selling it. Um, I did get into a small small little order um, on Thursday out of here. You know, I'm pretty happy with the, pro the profits that I did take out of it. Uh, but now what I'm continuing to look for is, so we've broken the low, right? Right there. And now this was the manipulation during London session that caused that low. So this is my order flow SC, right? So out of that order flow SC, you know, you can kind of see, especially if you don't have the seconds time frame, you could see what happened in there. We got a really, really clean distribution. 
right? So here's your distribution, all right? And now what I want to play out of is this UTAD. I want this to get mitigated right here. So that move right there gets mitigated. You know, you can see I've marked it out. So I'm going to be looking for price. I, I, I will potentially, depending when we get up there, I will throw just a small, small risk order off 50% because I think it's like, I don't know, like one and a half pips or something. Let me see. Yeah, 1.6 pips. So I will throw a small little order out of this. Um, and it's, it's important because what happened in there, you know, that is the that is the, the New York price act or the pre New York price action that caused where she at, there it is. This is that pre New York and the UTAD was New York open. So New York open caused that break down here. So I am though still obvious to see, right? You could see this as an accumulation, right? Same thing. You've got, you know, your SC, your ST, your ST. So, could we potentially see order flow break, draw out some ice, and then turn this into a redistribution? Absolutely. That's what I'm counting on. Why? Because when we look at CAD Chef, why would this accumulate here? Right? We're bearish. You know, I'm looking for price to at minimum get down into this area here and further take this lower, right? Because all we did was just trade into higher time frame supply up here. That's all we did. You know, you could see um, from a higher time frame perspective, right? What do we do? Higher time frame structure. This distribution, we traded right into that sucker. And then from there, we've just been walking this down, you know? So I'm just waiting for us to continue walking this down. Um, and, you know, for me, the the most the the easiest or the the more logical trade now is to play out of order flow until we get into structure so and that's what i'm going to do i'm going to wait you know hopefully we get up in here tomorrow pre new york and i want to get you know obviously i'll put small risk on that setup uh but i want to i want to wait for distro because it is order flow um and that's when i'm going to wait you know i'm going to target is going to be a new low that would explain things. Yep. Yep. You got it, man. Um, yeah, there you go. So that's, that's what I'm waiting on. And you can see, we're just walking this down, just continuing to walk down, walk down, walk down. You know, um, like I said, I got last week, I got into an entry out of here uh, in our, in my point of interest, the 50%, nice little seconds time frame distribution that gave a really, really clean entry. Um, and then, you know, now I'm just waiting just waiting for this sucker to come back up here. All right, uh, I guess I can wait. What does this one say? No, delete that, boom, all right. So that's why I'm waiting on Cat Chef. On GU, I know some of you guys asked about GU. Listen, GU ain't nothing for me until we break that low. Until we break that low, there ain't nothing for me to do with GU. You know, you could just see, you can see the, the legs, right? These are the legs. So we've come up into prior supply, unfortunately never gave me an entry. And now I just need that low so that we can play out of something. So until that low gets taken, I'm, I'm really not interested in doing anything with GU. That's just, you know, for, for me, it's, it's when it comes to, like, like I said, the risk assessment, um, you know, I'm expecting us to come into at minimum, this right here, that's going to be an area that I want to see if that's going to give a bounce, you know, um, you know, maybe something like this, take it down. And that's what get, gives us another pullback to continue to sell. Um, but for me on GU, for me on GU, I'm expecting us to come into that COVID drop. You know, this, this for me at this point, this is what needs to get mitigated. This area right here. That's where I'm expecting to take GU down to. All right. Um, so that's that's my thoughts on GU. Uh, now, NU, NU and AU are a different story, right? You, you saw that I'm bullish on AU. I'm also bullish on NU, right? Um, and NU has, has maintained intraday structure. We've also, you could see this massive accumulation, right? We have this massive accumulation right here. 
And, um, you know, there's your trading range, here's your spring. And this was the test of the spring. And from there, we've made a new high. So what I'm waiting for is I'm waiting, do you can see I have an alert up here, do we reaccumulate? And if we reaccumulate, am I going to play a mitigation to go higher? Or, right, or am I, are we going to keep distributing? And I've got a limit order right there out of that low. Okay. So I'm looking for buys on NU. You can, you know, measure out this bad boy right here. And you'll see that if you measure the spring, we come right to 80% of it. You know, not only do we come to 80% of it, we came to 80% of the reaccumulation that I was looking for the buy out of. So unfortunately, when you go to that lower time frame, and I know I talked about it last week, but if you go, if you go lower time frame in there, you'll see, you'll see the type two schematic. Right. So we have we have a type two schematic, one drive, two drive, three drive. And in our third drive, we have a very, very clean type one schematic that sits right here. So that's where my order limit is just waiting on price to come back in there. So I'm personally going to take it off the 80 and the 50. You know, it's a 1.9 and a 3.4 pip stop. I'm going to let price kind of tell me what it's going to do out of that. Um, or like I said, I'm going to wait for the reaccumulation to play order flow. So I would rather play structure. I'd rather this just come on down. Um, but if it doesn't, and we, we ultimately do something like this and we break these highs, then this down here is my shakeout, right? And then this would be the SC of that order flow. So those are two areas that I would potentially look for schematics to take higher. Um, but on NU right now, there's nothing for me to play because I'm not in a buy or a sell on NU, so I can't hedge anything. Um, so I'm just going to wait. I'm just going to be patient, wait. My first area that I will look for a buy out of is going to be this area right here, this reaccumulation. So if we do come, into this area. And remember, we have Australian news tomorrow, which is going to move the Kiwi dollar as well. So this could get us down into this area. And maybe, you know, my favorite day of the, the week to trade Thursday, get an entry on Thursday. Do you still have the NU limit set out of this low right here? Yeah, absolutely. Yep. It's a structure point. This is what's maintaining lower time frame structure. So absolutely. Yeah, I got that limit set. Why Thursday? I don't know. My journal tells me that Thursdays are my best days to trade. Yep. Yeah. Thurs Thursdays for me are my best days to trade. So I make, I'm, and it's not even close, not even close. So, yeah. Uh, so that's, that's kind of like what I'm waiting on, on NU. Uh, if NU makes a new high right now, are you removing the limit? Uh, no, no, no. Because if this is a reaccumulation, right? It's a continuation play. Structure is still this, right? Structure will still be that. So, yeah. Yeah, not this Thursday. What, because of the holiday? Yeah, there might, I, yeah, I don't, I don't know if we're going to be, I don't, I don't know. We'll see. I may not, I may not even trade Thursday. Um, we'll see. I may, I may partake in some veteran festivities. So, all right. Yeah. So that's what I'm waiting on in you. You know, it's, it's, you know, we're, we're not too far from a point of interest that I would take a buy out of. What are we like 200 pips? Yeah. And you can, and you can make some moves, um, but we'll see, we'll see how it plays out. Um, yeah. Yeah. No, there's, there's, there's a, trust me, I've already got it mapped out. I know where I'm going for breakfast. I know where I'm going for lunch. I know where I'm going for dinner. So is it safe to short and you into your point of interest? Uh, is it safe to, I mean, for me, it's never safe to counter trend, right? So, I mean, if I was in a buy, I would, I would look to hedge the sell, but I'm not in a buy. So that's why I'm not, I'm not doing anything because there's nothing what's keeping any, we're in a bullish market, right? What's keeping NU from just doing that? Nothing, you know? So I would rather just wait for the buy. Yeah. I mean, you can, I just, I'll tell you, I'm not, I'm not risking my equity on a, on a counter trend move if I'm not in a position to take a buy. So um, on us dollars was Frank, same thing. I'm still, I still got this order down here. You know, that those, those are still pending. Um, I'm just waiting. 
you know, just waiting. This thing has been taking forever. How long have we been waiting for this? We've been waiting since August 4th. August 4th is when I've been waiting on this. Um, you know, and I'll continue to wait. You know, it is what it is. But that this is the area that I'm waiting on right in here. Just a super, super clean again. It came out of news. I don't remember what time was this at. So 9 a.m. So this was probably like an NFP. Um, super clean uh, accumulation. This was your spring. This is what I want to play out of. So, you know, the there's a five minute. I don't know if it's still there. I've, I've got it on the journal, but there is a, you go down here, you go to the five minute and you could see the micro. I mean, all day long, there's your, there's your accumulation. There's your spring. That's what I want to play out of. So that's what I'm waiting on, on us dollar Swiss franc. It does, um, man. And, and, and just look at this, look how long this just, these are, these are times where I I'm happy. I'm not in these stupid trades, man, for 12 days, 12 days, you've just been sideways, just doing this. There's nothing that I want to play out of this. I don't want one to be locked up in, in margin, you know, where I can't take other trades. And two, I don't want to deal with managing and checking and going back to the charts. And I'm like, wow, man, this thing is just sideways, sideways, sideways. So you know, we were, or, you know, we were looking for a small little hedge sell out of this area up here. Um, but you can see it just never came high enough for me to get that distro that I wanted. So I'm going to just going to continue to wait for this. It's not that far off. What was it? Last time I checked, we were only, we're only 80 pips. So this is something relatively quick that I can do. Uh, wouldn't us dollar Swiss franc be inverse to chef JPY and N U? Um, so to NU, no, not to NU, but I could see the correlation to Chef JPY and U Chef if you invert them. Um, I just don't know if they completely correlate. So hold on, we'll take a look at it. So let me hide the drawings. So there is Chef JPY, and then you would want to invert it. It's inverted. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's much correlation in the chart. So let's see. There we go. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's much correlation. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -mm. Yeah, just keep in mind also too that there is a lot more there's a lot more volume of contracts being traded with US dollar Swiss franc as opposed to Chef JPY. Right. So that that definitely goes into correlation, right? The volume of orders, the volume that's being traded in there. You know, let's just say hypothetically, US dollar Swiss franc may have on a daily you know, may have $50 billion being traded where Chef JPY might only have 5 billion, right? So that market, that market tolerance is, is significant when it comes to correlating. Okay, uh, so that's, yeah. I mean, there's really nothing for me to say much more on US dollar Swiss franc. I just want this to continue to come a little lower and come into this area here. You know, I've been waiting for a very long time on it. And you can see, I like, I like how we're doing this. I like how we're just methodically very, evenly just trading this down. I like that. That's what I like to see. I like to see how that, that happens because that sets up not only the trap for the sellers, because what's everybody doing? Oh, look, we're selling, we're selling, we're selling, we're selling. And then that's where you're going to get that big rally. That's where you get this move right here. So that's what I'm, that's kind of what I'm waiting on. Um, yeah. The, we talked about EG. Oh, no, no, no. No, we're way past that us dollar so uj right uj um i'll tell you like uj is just being very 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 stupid uh this thing is just taken forever forever you could see like i've been waiting i still have i still have this limit order here from august 3rd just like on us dollar swiss franc and this thing has i mean we're we're talking about what is this thing now going on 30 days, we've just been sitting up here. 
So this is the first point of interest right here that I'm waiting for. Um, I'm waiting for price to come into that area. That's going to be my first buying area. The And you can just kind of see like how just sloppy and disgusting this thing has really turned into. You've got your distribution here, right? That's your distro. You've got your redistribution here. So now I just want price to just continue to, to walk itself down. And that is where I want to buy out of, right? Uh, for me, the, what is it? The 10 minute candle is what I want to play out of. Yeah, right there. That 10 minute candle is what I want to play out of. All right. Um, if we can, if I can see price getting into that area, you, I've got my alert up here. Price comes into this 10 minute candle. That's that's where I'm going to be looking for a lower time frame accumulation to take this sucker higher. Um, you know, and that's th this to me was a news candle. I, I want to say uh, it's 8 30 in the morning. So it's either it's got to be like NFP. Um, but that's that's what I want to play out of this candle right here. Um it's uh, to me, it was the cause of the new high, right? So we broke, we broke not only this high here, right? But we broke Come on, where is it at? Four hour? Here we go. But we broke this high, right? When we broke that high right there, when we broke that high right there, that 10 minute candle, was the cause of it, right? And you could see the reaction we got from it. After that 10 minute candle came back and mitigated inside of this four hour, just look at the rally it gave, right? So this is this is gonna be the first area that I wanna really target. And I feel like I've just been waiting forever for this thing, but it is, you know, like you just gotta sit here where we're about a hundred pips away. You know, it's maybe we get it this week. Hopefully we get it this week, but that's what I'm waiting on there. Um, on gold, I know somebody was looking for gold, but listen, if somebody could tell me what the heck, hold on, here we go. I'll just put, I'll, I'll put this on the chart right here. If somebody could tell me what the heck is going on with gold, I'd love an explanation because for the last 145 days, we've been stuck in this box and there's nothing I really want to do with it anymore. Um, you know, the, the, it, you know, obviously if we get up higher, I'm going to look for cells. Um, but there's nothing I want to do out of it. We had, we had a buy, was it on this chart that we had the buy? We had a buy. Maybe it's on another chart. I don't even know where I have the buy on it. I know we had a buy on it um, from a lower area, but all right, I have no idea. Maybe maybe it's on a different visibility. Yeah, no, I don't know. I have no clue. I know um, I know we were looking at a potential at a potential sell this morning. Yeah, out of this micro distro, it gave it gave a pretty decent. Was it on the fifteen second? It gave a pretty decent. Uh, R to R. Yeah, this is what we were looking at this morning. Um, it gave, shoot, what was the R to R on it? Um, it gave a, at most, it gave a one to 12. But after that, it just, it never, I mean, you could see just coming into the point of interest that I would have been looking for the sell. It, it never really even gave a distribution. It just shot right through it. So for me, I'm, you know, like I said this morning to a bunch of the guys that we were looking at gold, this thing is just a mess. There, there is nothing, there is nothing that I really want to do with this other than wait for buys down in the 1500s that I'm going to personally be investing in. Same thing with silver. So import and export on gold is very low. That's, that's why import and export on gold is very low. Um, Okay. Yeah. Is that why it's, there's just no volatility. Is that why it's just sideways? Okay. All right. Yeah. I mean, so I, I could care less about it. It's for me, I'm, I'm, I'm more interested in silver 
I'm more interested in selling silver just because silver is actually doing something. Silver is actually walking itself down to the buy area that I want to get into. You know, where we are coming into this candle right here. We are going to be coming into that. So, and you can see we've we've properly distributed. So whether this distribution holds, I don't care. I mean, I'm long term, I'm bullish on it, but whether we do that and then do something like this, fantastic. Um, but that's that's kind of what I'm waiting on. Yeah. That's kind of what I'm waiting on. Um, and then I know I talked about, I know I talked about US 30, right? So this was going back to like news, right? We, was it on Awanda? Hold on. Was it, let me see which. So again, I didn't get into this. The order missed me, man. And I was, I was, I was very hot to try it. Let me tell you. Um, I was a little, all right, that's where it was. I was a little pissed off. So hold on. Where's that? Let me go to, hold on. Let me go to my watch list. So just to give you guys an idea, right? So we were looking at during New York session. I really only trade this during New York session, right? So here's, here's the chart that we were looking at uh, on Wednesday, right? This was for FOMC. So we were looking at price. This was the New York equities open, New York stock market open manipulation that then causes the high. So this is the SC, right? And all we were looking at, I just marked this out and gave me an area to look for an accumulation, right? So when we look at it, and I'll go, I'll go back to like replay mode on it, right? So again, this is just order flow, right? We're playing order flow because we're bullish in every damn time frame on US 30. Um, but you could see, what do we have? We have our distribution, right? We have our distribution, we have the accumulation, and then when what causes the break the break is the equities open this is the 930 open so what i want price to do is i want price to come back and and mitigate that okay so as price uh as price comes into that area you'll see and we actually got in off the 50 percent as well but it was a big fat break even Yeah, so we actually got in here off of, let me see, do I have it marked out? Yeah, yeah. So we actually got in here uh, really clean type one accumulation. And this was the spring, right? This is the spring. So um, you, know, you can see it comes right into the 80% of it. And as soon as, as soon as we break the high, right? We, we took some partials. It was a, I don't even know what it was. It was a, A one to seven. It wasn't anything big, but it was a one to seven. We reduced risk. And then price ends up just collapsing, right? Price ends up coming back down and collapsing. But now we're getting into the news event, right? So hold on. Here we go. So FOMC comes out um, at 2 p.m. Eastern. And you could see this is now 115, 117. So what happens as price? What happens as price now is building into the news release, right? So so what do we see, right? We can see a super, super clean schematic building, right? We could see it building. And then at that point, right, we have our schematic, right? We have our schematic. Do we have a spring yet, right? No, we don't have a spring. All we have is one drive, two drive, three drive. And we have another a fourth drive, but it's not a spring. So what do we have to wait for? We have to wait for our spring, right? That's what I'm waiting for. So I'm not taking anything yet. Boom, now we got our spring. So at this point, what, am I, what do I need to do? I just got to wait for my break of structure. So we're coming in about 10 minutes before the news release. Here's the break of structure that I need. There's no trade until we break that high. So price, price breaks that high, right? So when price breaks that high, what I need to measure is my spring, right? And you could see that when we measure it, hold on, when we measure it, 
this is 50%. This is the 80%. So I added, obviously, I had it off 80% of the spring was my entry. But now if we measure this last draw push, right, this last push right in here, this is 80% of that push. So I know everybody always asks me, Mike, why do I, why do I like the 80% so much? Well, because when the news release comes out at two o'clock, that's what we get, right? Right at two o'clock when the news release comes, the market it was manipulated to come right into 80% of that push. So I got, well, I, I take it back. I did not get filled on this order because the spread on my broker went from two points to seven. And on the buy, you've got to have it on the entry and it just didn't happen. So by the time, and you saw how quick this happened, by the time I saw that it missed me and I went to market execute, man, we were, we were up here. So it sucked. It sucked. And, uh, and this was a one to 100, right? So this was a one to 103. Uh, it went a little higher, but I know where a lot of the other guys ended up securing profits and closing out was a one to 100. You know, you could see price just rocketing up and it went for, I mean, at the most it went for, what was that? A one to 122. So, but really, really clean. And, you know, when you ask me like, do I take fundamentals into account? Absolutely. I look to see what time they're coming out. But if you, if you think for one second that the institution that orchestrated that push or institutions that orchestrated that push didn't get their, because think about it, this is a 15 second schematic. This took 42 minutes, right? The news release came out at 10 or I'm sorry, at two. You know, so super, super clean. And then the same thing with SPX. Now, this was Wednesday. I made sure I did catch SPX. That that I made sure we caught. So SPX did the same exact thing uh, on the day after, right? On Thursday. So wait a minute, where where did we get in? We got in New York. There we go. Okay. So same kind of thing here, right? This was Thursday morning. We let's go down five minutes. Yeah. So again, same thing, right? Reaccumulation. All right. What's, what's your shakeout? Your shakeout is your shakeout is this area right here, right? This not only sweeps, this not only sweeps all of these lows, right? And then breaks the high, but it's also New York equity open, right? So like when people ask, like, when do I trade it? I only trade it during New York session. Why? Because nothing else matters, right? Like this is something I've learned in backtesting. Uh, and on the one minute, if you don't have the seconds time frame, on the one minute, you want to get used to that pattern right there because that is a beautiful type one schematic. All right. And, you know, if I, I think, I don't remember what, what I was doing. I don't know why I missed this, but because normally I'm on top of it at equities open, but there's your, there's your type one right? And price comes back into 50%. <clears throat> price comes back into 50% of your spring. So this theoretically could have been a one and a half point stop loss on SPX or 15 pips, however you want to call it, right? Um, <clears throat> but super, super clean. You know, you've got your climax, you've got your test, you've got your test, you've got your spring, that's your spring, that's your break, and then boom, gone. So what I was looking at was coming back into this area here, right? You rec recommend looking at those seconds time frame. Uh, I recommend looking at the seconds time frame when you've got all the other time frames down packed. Otherwise, you're gonna you're just gonna get stuck on 15 seconds, 30 seconds, five seconds, and not not pay attention to what really is happening. All right. So, but this was, this was the area that I wanted to see us come back into. Right. And again, what did, what did NFP give us? Right. So coming into NFP news release. Let's go down here. So we're in the area, right? This is the area that I want us to come into. And you can see, so let's go five second, right? Because this one required a five second. So 
So there you go. There's your five second accumulation schematic, right? One drive, two drive, three drive, your spring, right? So what did I do here? I measured 50% of the spring, which was a <clears throat> 1.3 pip stop. <clears throat> that was it. And pretty self, pretty clean. And you'll see the reason I did the 50% the, the is because you could see this wick here on the one second, there was no imbalance there. The imbalance laid, uh, essentially the imbalance was right there, right? Right in there. So, but that spring didn't break structure. Yeah, it did. Yeah, see it? There you go. Yeah, yeah. Yep, there you go. So we broke. Um, and then from there, it's following the market cycle. So what do we see? What do we see price doing right now, right? What does that look like? Looks like a distribution. Do I care that it's a distribution? Heck no. What am I thinking it's going to be? I'm thinking it's going to be a reaccumulation and the shake out of that reaccumulation is going to tap my entry. So what do we get right there? We get triggered in at this point, reduce the risk and the rest is history, right? The rest is history price. Ultimately, I think I ended up closing out at the end of the day. Yeah, one to 37 is what I closed out at the end of the day. Um, and you can see, hold on. So you could see price out of that entry right here, out of that entry price reaccumulated, reaccumulated, gave us that just huge impulse. And then I ended up closing out here um, at the end of the day. Um, and this was a one to 37 out of that distro. So, yeah, I mean, it, um, you know, for me, the fundamentals matter because that's when the, that's when the market's going to manipulate the most. All right. Um, yeah. But for, for anybody that's looking to get the second time frame, I'll tell you this, like the second time frame is invaluable, right? It's like, I use it every day, um, not only to get refine my entries, but to actually see what the market is doing. Um, but I will very cautiously say this, that don't get tunnel vision because I'll tell you right now, when I first started trading Wyckoff and I went from a, like a 15 minute time frame to a one, I was taken back. I was like, man, this thing moves way too quick. Um, and, you know, I mean, heck the other, what was it? A couple of weeks ago, we took a one second accumulation out of US 30 that gave us a phenomenal entry. So if you open a demo account on awanda.com, can you use the seconds time frame on their trade? Yeah, you can. Yep. Yeah. I'll be honest, to me, the I pay for TradingView, the premium, not for the seconds time frame. I pay for it for this right here, the alerts, because I get 400 alerts. So that means that I don't have to sit and watch charts. I could just set all the alerts I want and, you know, not have to not have to sit there. So plus it's a it's a tax write off if you if you're if you're a full time trader and you're you know you have a business doing this like I do, um, you know it's a tax write off. So I don't mind doing it. And then there's you know there's a hack that you can use to get sixty percent off. So yeah. Um, so anyway, but that's that's pretty much everything I'm watching on my secondary list. Listen, like all this stuff here is just just a waiting game. You know, like AJ. Um, you know, AJ's got a long way to go to get down into the areas that I want to buy. Same thing with NJ, you know, like NJ is just a ways, ways, ways. GJ is the same thing. Um, you know, GJ is shoot. I mean, where do I want to get into? I mean, we're talking at minimum 200 pips. Like I, I want to get down into this area here on GJ. Um, what else? Ch -ch -ch -ch. Euro odd. So Euro odd, hold on. What's the hack? Um, you hat you sign up for the automatic every you know year, the automatic withdrawal, and then you go ahead like the week before and decline it, like cancel it. They're gonna ask you why, and you tell them that it costs too much, and then they're gonna offer it to you for 60% off if you buy, but you have to buy it for the year. You can't do the month to month. So yeah. What are you looking for to ultimately execute your trade? Um, well, I don't get down to the seconds time frame until we come into the higher time frame point of interest. And then my confirmations for the schematic, you know, so find a type one, wait for the BOS, play the mitigation of the of the spring as your test entry. So I mean that's that's what it that's honestly it's it's a simple, it's a very simplistic confirmation, you know. 
I don't, I don't get down to this. You won't see me on anything lower than like a one hour time frame, unless we get into the point of interest that I want to get into. So, um, yeah, yeah. A schematic. You'd love to learn more about it. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, I would, I would suggest picking up Ruben Villamosa's book. Uh, that's going to be like your, your, the prerequisite, I guess that's going to teach you everything you need to know about it. Um, <clears throat> hold on. So my bad, hold on. Let's see. Can you set alerts to your phone? Yeah. Yeah. You can, well, you can set alerts on. Yeah. I mean, if I'm um, hopefully you guys know how to use the alerts, right? Like on your alerts, you come over here <clears throat> and you know, you can notify in the app. So if you have the app on your iPad or your iPhone or your Android phone, whatever, it'll alert you there, the pop-up. So like I'll get on my desktop, I get a little notification up in the top right of my screen. It'll send me an email. Um, I don't do the URL thing. I could care less about that. And then you can also do an, uh, an email to your, uh, as a text message. Um, but then we're just getting a little crazy, you know, like I'm, I'm perfectly fine. I always have on my phone or the iPad, I have trading view logged in. So I get the notification in that. Yeah. Um, what's the book? Uh, the uh, it's by Ruben Villamosa and it's Wyckoff methodologies in depth. And then he's also got Wyckoff methodologies 2.0. So yeah, hold on, bear with me. Yeah, cool. There we go. There we go. Yeah, so that the hack, I mean, like I said, for trading view, the hack is just um, uh, you know, you have you have it set to auto pay every year and you'll get an email the week before. Um, and then just go ahead and cancel it. And right after you cancel it, it'll ask you, you know, why and just again tell them you know, you you select it's already pre it's already pre-done, you just bubble it in, you know, too expensive, and then they'll offer you the 60% off. So I've done it every year. Um, yeah. So, I mean, on, on, I mean, even CAJ, like CAJ just has a ways to come down. I mean, <clears throat> we're talking like before I do anything with CAJ, I'm looking at minimum 200, 200 to 200, 300 pips. <clears throat> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Every, every black Friday, but you don't have to, you know, you don't have to wait for black Friday to do it. So yeah. Yep. Um, yeah. So all of this on here, you know, I know somebody wanted to look at UCAD. I'll, I'll be honest, like UCAD for me is nothing at this point. You know, um, I mean, I'm not, I'm not totally convinced that this is going to, I know we played out of that, um, but we traded below here, you know, and that's to me, when we traded below here, I was immediately waiting for us to come back into this because this is our leg, right? This is the distribution, one, two, three drive. This is the distribution. Um, I'm waiting for us to come back into this area here for the buy, or I need us to invalidate some supply, you know, and at this point right now, like you could see what is maintaining supply. Well, this distribution right here is maintaining supply. So until, until we do something on UCAD, it's just going to sit on my secondary list. Like there's, there's nothing I'm going to really play out of, um, you know, I mean, this, this news candle here is significant. Um, and if you just look at, if you look at where like the 1580 kind of sit, this is an area that, and that's kind of why my alert is here. Cause if we do come down into this area here, um, you know, at this point it's, it's a no, it's a no play for me, but we have an accumulation, we have ice, right? So price breaks through the ice, breaks the low. What do we have? We have a redistribution. And just looking at price action, that right there has my attention. You know, that's something I'd be looking at price coming back to mitigate out of. Uh, that would be the shakeout. I don't even know what, what was I looking at in here? What is this? Oh, okay. Okay. This was the distribution. This was the distribution that we were looking at playing. Yeah. So I'm, I'm not, yeah, for me, I'm UCAT sits on the secondary list because there's 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 really nothing to play on it for me. Nothing clean that I want to throw equity at. Um, yeah, so that's that's pretty much it. That's what I've got. Um, if anybody has anything else, we can look at it. Um, you know, awesome. Thank you, man. Thank you.
Um, if anyone's got any charts, we'll take a look at it. If anyone's got anything else they're looking at, we can look at it. But I'll be honest, like the markets, the last probably like three, four weeks have just been just very lethargic, very sideways. And I can tell you fundamentally, it's because of what is coming, the, the throw up that is coming out of these governors and chairmen of these uh, world banks on what their policy changes and what their um, what their outlook is for uh, their perspective or respective uh, banks. You know, so the market is just very, very on standstill, you know, uh, now not equities market. I mean, because th those stupid things are just going higher, higher, higher. But uh, when it comes to currencies, yeah, the, the from a, a global fundamental analysis standpoint, just look at the economics going on around the world. You know, the U.S. dollar, right? The U.S. dollar, we're in hyperinflation in the U.S. And there is nothing that they're no policy that they've instituted that that has any forefront to reduce that. So by default, hyperinflation means that your 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 currency value should be depreciating. So that's why I'm waiting to see does that distribution that we're on on DXY does it in fact depreciate? Do we see the DXY coming lower? So yeah. Um yeah, yeah, no absolutely. Yeah, you know, I mean they well they've already said that they're tapering off on uh on the bonds and stuff and the other you know, the other major thing that's really going to kind of influence is what they're going to be doing for quantitative easing. So, you know, from like a macroeconomic standpoint, that's going to be a huge, um, a huge weight on the DXY. And listen, I mean, I know it's the, the DXY is what moves the market globally. You know, everything is in some form or another uh, responding to the DXY's movement. So, and we'll see, we'll see how that's going to happen. You know, um, did we look at GU and GJ? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, GJ was a quick five second. Here you go. That's, that's, that's my outlook on GJ. You know, GJ is, I'm, I'm waiting for us to come back into our reaccumulation. You know, it's 300 and something pips away. That's, that's what I'm waiting on. <laughs> yeah. So what's my Instagram? Right there, bro. Right there. Yeah. Um, what's your thoughts on fundamentals? Because I was doing my research, a lot of hedge funds trade off fund. Did you just jump on the call, man? I'm pretty sure I've been talking about the fundamentals. Hedge funds don't, tra don't trade off hedge funds, uh, off fundamentals. So they, they trade off of <laughs> they they hedge funds well your major hedge funds they they trade off of moving averages and they trade off of uh support and resistance that's that's what they teach um for a majority of the hedge funds so that's why they have like when you when you look at a hedge fund that's why like you know they'll you know you know i could just speak from my personal experience like that's why they, they'll tell you they'll quote you like well we can we can get you like an eight percent yearly return you know, because that's what they're doing. They're, they're just, they're doing a bunch of market hedges. They're doing all kinds of stuff, but they, but they typically move off of moving averages. And that's why I always keep a 50 moving average because I know what the hedge funds are going to be doing, you know, oh my God, look, GJ just broke the 50 day moving average. So they're bearish, you know, and when they break back up, they'll buy it, you know? So that's, that's kind of how they, 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 they trade it, you know, and they typically do it off the four hour and the daily. So yeah, you know, good for them. Um, what's my take on COT reports? Uh, I could care less about them. Yeah, I could care less about them. I, I, I would ask you this, what's, what, is your, what is your main reason to read through the hundreds of pages of a COT report? <clears throat> uh, You just go to the alert thing. See the little alarm clock right here? Click on the alarm clock and up here, it'll tell you I've used 60 out of my 400. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, how did you? How do you think XRP and central bank digital currencies will affect Forex? Uh, I don't think they're going to affect Forex. I think they're going to be totally separate. Don't, so let, let's, let's just say this, right? Cryptocurrency is not going to be a digital currency in um, in world banks, right? 
the 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 Federal Reserve will never adopt Bitcoin or Ethereum or Polkadot or Solana. They will never adopt that as a digital currency. All they're going to do is they're going to make the U.S. dollar a digital currency, which it is a digital currency, right? It is. Think of it like this. Let me ask you, and maybe you know, maybe I'm naive to this, right? But how many of you work and get a paycheck, right? How many of you have actually touched the actual dollars amount that you got paid on your paycheck? Or did it just get directly deposited into your bank account? Because if, if you actually physically don't touch the currency, guess what? You have a digital currency, right? Banks, especially like I know in, in, in the US, banks aren't required to hold. If I, got, if I have $400,000 in my bank account, right? If I went to the bank to withdraw the 400,000 right now, they're not going to be able to give that to me in cash, right? Banks don't hold physical cash at all their, at all their, at their, um, at their locations, right? When you need physical cash, like you're having, you, you have to wait days for that. So all they're talking about, like I know in the U S all they're talking about with digital currencies, it's just, it's, it's another way to allow banks to make more money because it skirts around the, you know, because right now, Banks are required a certain percentage of their assets uh, as either collateral or in physical greenback or gold to be held in their vaults, right? That's that's how you know th- you know because if you don't, it's just a Ponzi scheme, right? It's like oh yeah yeah you know like I, I'll make up some fictitious money, and you know you can you can use whatever you know allocated funds you have in your account, but unless it's backed by anything. It's, it's, you know, it's not there. So uh, to me, digital currencies um, that the banks want to have is just another way for them to skirt around the requirement to hold physical uh, backing or physical collateral and allow them to just make more money. So um, hold on. Yep, exactly. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's ridiculous how much they can, they, they, they don't, they don't need to hold anything, you know, uh, is the yellow marks POIs, the yellow marks, the yellow marks, what yellow marks, man? Uh, you mean like the yellow, the, the yellow, the yellow things here? No, man, that's, that's Asian session. Uh, do you think that fudging with the numbers around will flash crash crypto? No, I mean, so I think, listen, I'll tell you right now, there's, there, <laughs> the crypto markets are manipulated, right? But they're manipulated in, in, a, in a good way, right? If you know how to play it, you know, like every time we have a major sell-off, what, I mean, most of you guys know, what am I doing? I, it's Christmas for me. I'm going on a shopping spree. Anytime we have a huge sell-off like we did in May, man, I was, I was buying up coins left and right. Dude, my crypto portfolio right now, I'll tell you, is through the roof. Loop ring, man. Loop ring is up. Geez, I don't even know what loop ring is up right now. Loop ring is up. I mean, I went on a shopping spree for this sucker. Uh, I am up. Where is it? So from my initial, from my initial buy, I am up fourteen hundred percent on this bad boy. You know, all of these things, man, everything that I, Solana, Solana, the big drop that we got in on Solana. uh, I mean, that thing's up 1100%. So when we get these massive sell-offs, I I go on shopping sprees. I'm happy with it. Um, Do, do I think that governments are going to be able to regulate crypto? Hell no. Why? Because in order to do, in order to regulate, right? Like when, when your mom or dad, gave you a consequence and said that you had to do something and you said, no, what did you, what do they do? You got some sort of punishment, right? What punishment can they do to crypto holders? Nothing. What are they going to do? Turn off the crypto blockchain? They can't, right? There's no way for them to do that. How are they going to track people down? They can't because last time I checked, when I had a, a wallet, I didn't have to put any kind of information. All I have is I have a passphrase and I have a long ass address that is tied to an arbitrary number. I'm just a number, right? So there's, there's no teeth. They can try to threaten all they want, but unless people actually say, okay, I will follow your regulation, there's nothing that they can do for the crypto markets. Um, yeah. What's your take on the whole metaverse thing and crypto metaverse? I mean, listen, it, I mean, 
it's it's it is all of all of those you know everything from like the axi to the uh what's the alluvium now i mean even engine engine is going to come out with like a role player game like all of this and that's that's just that's this decades or this that's this um you know the like when i grew up you know my thing was sony playstation came out and that was the big thing the metaverse man that's now where that's where everybody is playing on that's where everybody is owning digital property i mean listen it is what it is you know i'm not gonna fight it you know i i got into the nft space why because i saw the potential and heck i what was it the other day i sold a I sold a Peyton Manning Super Bowl NFT that I bought for like $4.99 at auction. And somebody paid me, I don't even know what it was. It was something like seven Ethereum for it. So listen, if if people are gonna pay it, do it. You know, I mean, that's that's the only thing I can tell you. Um, they punish through heavy taxes if you know your customer exchanges. Um, yeah, but they they can try to tax it. You know, but I mean that that still involves them. Oh, I'm not. Yeah, let let's. I I'll just tell you this: there's ways to get around that. That's all I'll say. There are definitely ways to do it. Um, uh, you were an early investor in Earth too. Okay, cool. Uh, how do you pick your NFTs? Um, yeah, I mean honestly, like I I, I spent a lot of time like researching the actual developers, researching the artists, researching past projects. Um, I'll be honest, man, there's, there's a lot of NFTs out there that are just duds, you know? So go, Hey, going back to the COT report though, I know somebody asked about COT report, just keep in mind the COT reports are delayed. Right. And I know most people, most people would be looking at COT reports for open interest or institution orders. Right. And why do I want to know when an institution got into an order last month? You know, I could care less. You know, I know when an institution got into an order. You know how I know? Because I can just look at the chart, right? I can come over here and look at the chart. And I can tell you that an institution back in April made an accumulation here. And I know they came back and mitigated out of their sell to buy. And how do I know? Look at that right there, that reaction. That was an institutional move. So I don't need to wait for the COT to report to come out three, four weeks later to tell me that open interest got into buys on Chef JPY there. I can just look at a chart and I can find, find your schematics, you know, where open interest or institutional order flow is sitting. Am I in angry apes? No, I'm not in angry apes. No, I'm not. I'll tell you right now, I, I'm not doing anything with Ethereum NFTs anytime soon because of this right here. That right there, I ain't doing diddly squat with, with Ethereum NFTs, man. That is stupid. You know, the other day, what was it? Where, where's that? Hold on. Where's that chart, man? Or that, that screenshot? I don't even know where it's at. I think it's my NFT page. Hold on. Uh, here you go. This, this, is, this is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. I tried buying, or I tried, was it seller or buy? I don't remember what I was doing. $255 is what I was trying to buy this NFT port for. And they wanted me to pay $8,000 in uh, gas fees. You know, they're out of their flipping mind. So I'm, I'm done. I'm done dealing with, uh, with Ethereum. So yeah, I'll do Solana. I'll do uh, Polygon, like the Matic network and stuff like that. I'll do NFTs on there, but I'm not doing anything that comes out on the Ethereum NFT space. Yeah, they can pack sand. So um that's why all apple pay and all of them are booming okay yeah 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 exactly yeah no it is it is more cost effective for them to go digital absolutely uh it see let's see buy i'm not buying more ship nope i'm done with ship i am done with ship I'll, i'm mining ship but i'm not gonna buy uh, i won't buy anymore Sh ship is done for me shib is done i took my profits i mean i've got a little bit of a runner but there, there's no point in me buying this anymore she's done so i yeah there's 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 no reason for ship to go any higher it's it's a meme coin you know just just think of so look at this chart right here right here hold on let's look at this chart right here 
And then let's look at Dogecoin, right? And all these poor bastards that got into Dogecoin. Let's see. All these poor bastards that got into Dogecoin when actually, let me go to a different chart. Uh, what is that? That's Bitfinex Finance. Yeah, here we go. All these poor bastards that got into, right? So Doge accumulated, had that reaccumulation, and then the high. Man, what's that look like? That looks like this right here the accumulation, the reaccumulation, and the high. Imagine buying Dogecoin here, right? Here. And now sitting in drawdown for the last 160 days, you know, there's, that's it. Like, I'm done with this. I'm not, you know, for me, like I said, I'll, I, I'm mining SHIB. Like I'm making, I don't know, like 1.5 million SHIB, I think every two weeks or something like that. Um, so it's like 150 bucks every two weeks, but, but it's only on one rig. So, or it's not even on one rig. It's on, it's my, on my test bench. So I'm just doing it to, you know, to, to do it. That, that's it. I'm not, I'm not going to be buying any more SHIB. So yeah. It, it, and well, Ethereum, I don't know if you guys have seen, right. Ethereum in another all-time high, man. We, we, we almost got to 4,900. So I am mining the crap out of Ethereum. I'm making, I'm, I'm currently right now, I'm making 0 0.1 Ethereum a week is what I'm, what I'm mining. So I'm making some decent Ethereum, you know, which is good. Um, what's my take on flow? Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm bullish on flow, man. I'm in it. I'm in it. I'm, uh, I'm happy with it. Listen, at this point, this is all just cost dollar averaging. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm perfectly content. I mean, it could still potentially come into here, you know, but this, this is a long, this is for me, this is a long-term investment. You know, um, I'm perfectly happy, you know, holding on to what I have. I'm not going to be, you know, obviously like I want to buy some more. And if we, I'll tell you this, if we do get like maybe into like the $7 50 range, I may throw in a little more. Um, but this, this to me is just going to start pumping eventually. You know, it's one of those that you're just going to have to wait on. Yeah. Uh, safe moon. I don't own any safe moon, man. Yeah. Safe moon to me was, was, is done. You know, it's the same thing like mana, um, Decentraland, you know, when, when I got into that, you know, we got, you know, we got in out of the, I got in out of the accumulation and, you know, unless it comes back down here, I won't buy anymore. You know, when you get these huge pumps, unless it comes back into some really discounted prices, I'm not doing any, what, uh, I bought it on uh Kraken and you can stake it. I don't know what, what do you, uh, what did I say? It's like, 12% you could stake it on for Kraken. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, have you thought of checking out the XRP? Not space, huh? Have you thought of checking out the XRP not space? No, I don't know. I don't know what that is. NFT. Ah, gotcha. NFT space. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I have, I have, um, man. How can I get material on knowing how to mine ship? Uh, damn, did I not? Did I not do a video on ship? I didn't. Did I or did I not? I did. Yeah, yeah I did a YouTube video on ship. I think on how to mine it. Hold on, let me see. Let me see. Um, where's my channel? Yeah, look, just go on my channel. I did, I did. I just saw it, yeah, yeah. Go on my channel and just go under crypto and you'll see it. Uh, I did a video on how to do it. You know, you can do it, You well, you can do it through CPU mining too, but you, it's not worth it. The, the best bet is a, is a GPU mining rig. So yeah, yeah, just go on my, on the crypto uh, folder and you'll, you'll see it, it's in there. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So flow, flow, I bought, I bought on Kraken. So that's where I buy it and I stake it on there. So, like I said, I think it's 12, 12%. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah. Oh no, no way less than that. My bad. 4.6, 4.6, but yeah, you can buy it. You can buy it on here. Kusama is 12%. 
So me personally, I stake my polka dot. I pay, stake my Kusama, my Cardano. Um, I don't do Adam. I do Adam on Exodus because they pay 10% on Exodus. Uh, Tezos does 8% on Exodus. So I don't do it here. Uh, I do have my Solana on here. Um, and you can also stake Ethereum for 5 to 7% without because right now to do a, an ethereum node right you need 42 ethereum or some crap like that which a lot of people don't have that so but you can stake your ethereum on kraken um and then the kava where's kava kava oh yeah kava is 20 percent. so i have kava and i and i stake that sucker for 20 percent. so yeah kraken kraken's my like second exchange that i use the most um yeah so that's i mean that's pretty much it that's what i got take on xlm uh Take on XM, XLM is I'm bullish. Yeah. Yeah. I'm bullish. Do I have any charts on Phantom? Uh, I, uh, I don't think I have anything that I want to. Yeah. No, no. I don't have any buys on it. Yeah. So XLM, I was looking for a buy out of here. You can see we never got low enough, but I'm, I'm personally holding XLM from like two pennies. So, you know, I'm just going to sit here and, and, and wait on this sucker. So you could just see, I mean, you can see the accumulation. You can see the reaccumulation. So, I mean, if you if you want to start cost dollar averaging in, I mean, this is where I'd be looking. So, I'd be waiting for price to break that high, right? Break that high, and you could see the distro into reaccumulation. So, my 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 two points that I'd be looking at, like this, would be one of the areas that I'd be looking for a buy out of. Um, and then I'd also be looking for a buy out of this area right here. So somewhere in this neighborhood. So you can see 50% has been mitigated. So that will leave me down in here. So when, when price engulfed this manipulation move, we came back to 50%. So those are the, those would be the areas that I'd be looking for buys, you know, but I, I'll tell you right now for me, XLM isn't, isn't worth I mean, I guess it is worth if you want to diversify, but it's it's not worth you know what you can get on some of these other ones. So yeah, top five coins to currently get under five dollars. Uh, where I couldn't tell you, man. Um, I mean, it all depends. I, I could tell you this is everything I own right here. This is everything I own all in here, and then this is everything I mine. So I mean. For me, the 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 dollar amount doesn't matter, um, you know, because heck, when I got into H and T, I got into H and T at sixteen dot was sixteen. No, no, I got in at ten dollars. I got in at ten dollars, and H and T has gone up since my buy five hundred percent. So, you know, H and T was doing really nice. Uh, what was the other one? Flux, man. Whoo, Flux, dude. I mind the crap out of Flux too. Uh, I'm making I'm making about what do I make about Fifty dollar, fifty flux a day is what I'm making. Um, I mean, this this was the this was the bad boy right here. This was the you know we I dropped this somewhere in here. We dropped it, but this is where we got into the buy right around like seventeen cents, and this thing almost got up to two dollars, so over a thousand percent. So yeah, this is this is doing wonders. This is doing wonders. Uh, I mean, crypto in general is just skyrocketing, so I'm happy with it. Um, are you going to participate in the polka dot auction? So um, I am not actually, no, I am not. The, you talk about where you're, because uh, I'll, I'll tell you this, because you have to lock up for it. Uh, if, if we're talking about the same thing, you have to lock up your polka dot on it. Um, are you talking, uh, are you talking on the cube coin? Is that what you're talking about? Is that what you're asking? I know there's a delay, so I'll wait. Um, yeah, so anyway, top five coins, I mean, and I can't tell you. Like, I, I mean, what, what I would say is this, like for me, every every week I, I spend I spend my Monday afternoons uh, going through crypto portfolios and reading some white pages. So, you know, or the white papers, I mean, and if I can, if I can, and then I also have some other sources. I, I'm not gonna lie. Like I, I do have some good buddies that, provide some awesome awesome work that they do on some of the platforms you know um also i'll tell you this super bid 
Superbid is getting ready to up their APY staking. So they're going to be doing on actually Thursday, 11, 11. Uh, they're going to be hundred percent APY is what they're going back up to, which is fantastic because I own a ton of super bid. So, yeah, but anyway, um, yeah, lock up for the two years. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I, so for me personally, I, um, I, I have a small amount that I'll lock up. Um, but I would rather, I would rather use it. Cause I'll tell you now, like on the polka dot side, like I'm making 12% on, a, on, um, on Kraken, just on the staking portion of it. And I've got polka dot tied up in like Kusama and Karura. Um, the, uh, you know, the stuff that I've been working on the last couple of months on, you know, I've got a lot of polka dot, st uh, tied up in there. So I'm not sure if I want to tie up my polka dot for two years, um, you know, on a, cause that essentially that's what it is. It's like, it's, it, you're, you're essentially using it as a collateral for a venture capital, um, you know, project. And I, I just don't know yet. I don't know if I want to do that. So yeah, I don't like the lockup period. So Yep. So we'll see, you know, we'll see how it goes, but awesome guys. Awesome. Well, listen, um, it's been fun. I've been on here for a while, like two and a half hours and man, my headache is killing me. So hopefully, you know, I got to answer some questions. Hopefully you guys got some, some good info in it. Um, if there's, you know, if there's anything else you guys can hit me up. Um, if not, I will catch everybody later. Um, you know, like I said, just, just keep in mind, markets have been just stupid lately you know don't um you know don't force anything all right so awesome guys listen enjoy and where's this at i will catch everybody later